are listening to McClure Publishing Incorporated recording on writing step by step. Writing each chapter, the settings, the plots, and the characters. Write so that your readers can smell, taste, hear, see, and touch what is going on in the room. For example, the smog in the air, the salt on someone's skin, the grooves in the grain of wood, etc. No senses should go untouched. This recording is copyrighted and cannot be duplicated. In this recording, we will be going over writing step by step. Number one, writing each chapter. Number two, the settings. Number three, think of a title. Number four, introduction. Number five, narrative. Number six, the setup. Number seven, conflict. Number eight, resolution. Number nine, first chapter plot. Number 10, dialogue. Number 11, personality traits. Number 12, chapter two to chapter 17. Number 13, conclusion. And number 14, the conclusion of chapter 18 to chapter 20. Be flexible, relax. This is not hardball. Writing can actually be a time of enjoyment. Create a marketing plan before finishing your book and find out areas where your book will do well. Think of writing as a business. Share marketing material with others, letting them know around about the time your book will be published. Place your book cover, ISBN, title, and name on every social network. Do as much public relations, PR, as time permits. There are three main parts of a story, and they are the settings, the plot, and the characters. The settings. This is where your story takes place. The setting is a time. The future, the past, the present. The setting is also the place. On the moon, in Chicago, at the White House. The setting is an important part of your story. For example, When a Man Loves a Woman by Kathy McClure, which is me. The setting takes place in the state of Ohio at landmarks and a historical place at a store, in a school, at a restaurant, in a club, in an office, at a church, etc. When I write regarding a particular place, although it is fiction, I want to write pertaining to the specific history of that place. I research information regarding the city, the culture, radio shows, TV shows, climate, nationalities that lives there, stores, companies, hotels, things that have taken place, description of what is in the room, communities, places, etc. Also, visiting that place is even better. You can get a better feel of what is actually happening there. You get to see with your own eyes. Therefore, you can write from what you see. Think of a title of the book. You might think of a title at the beginning while you are writing or toward the end. You might start with one title and change it before going to print. Introduction. Sometimes we find that the introduction of the book has a title called Preface, Forward, Prologue, Prelude, or Preamble. The introduction section tells the readers the background of the story 
and what they may expect without giving away too much information about the story. Some writers mistakenly type the word forward, F-O-R-W-A-R-D, instead of forward, which is F-O-R-E-W-O-R-D, as the title of the intro. Be sure that you use the correct word, which is forward, F-O-R-E-W-O-R-D. Also, as you are writing your manuscript, be sure to use the correct homonyms for words. For example, here, H-E-A-R is for listening, and for location is H-E-R-E, which is place. Food for thought. The word ant is pronounced the same way as the word ant that crawls on the ground. Some people mispronounce the word ant by dropping the A and only saying aunt, when it should be Aunt Sarah, Aunt Mary. Remember that antonyms are the opposite of words. For example, cold, hot, sweet, sour, good, bad. Let's move on to narrative, which is divided into three sections. Setup, first section. The setup is where all of the main characters and their basic situations are introduced and contains the primary level of characterization, exploring the characters' backgrounds and personalities. A problem is also introduced, which is what drives the story forward. In the setup section, the main characters' lives should explode in the first part of the book. What geographical area are you writing from? What type of places? For example, schools, businesses, and medical facilities will be in your story. The conflict, second section. The conflict is the bulk of the story and begins when the inciting incident or catalyst sets things into motion. This is part of the story where the characters go through major changes in their lives as a result of what is happening. This can be referred to as the character arc or character development. Resolution, third section. The resolution is when the problem in the story boils over, forcing the characters to confront it allowing all elements of the story to come together and inevitably leading to the end. First chapter, plot. The plot is the intriguing part of the book. It is the stratagem that drives the story. It is the scheme. For example, the movie Sixth Sense, starring Bruce Willis and others, talks about a little boy who's eight years old, Trevor Morgan, who played Cole Seer, is haunted by a dark secret. He is visited by ghosts and communicated with them. The genre, drama, science, fiction, fantasy, and thriller, rating PG-13. Also, the plot can be a secret plan or scheme to accomplish some purpose, especially a hostile, unlawful, or evil purpose, a storyline, the plan, or main story. The plot of your story tells the actions and events that take place in your story. Your plot should have a beginning, middle, and an end. The plot tells the events of your story in a logical order through cause and effect, by a pattern of events or by coincidence. Basically, a plot is the part of a story that survives retelling in a very brief form. Set up your story in the direction where you are going. Describe the plot with a story. What is the set time that you are writing? Is this place of time during a slow period or fast period? Where is the story taking place? Introduce your main characters as heroes or villains. 
What is it that he wants to accomplish? What steps does he plan to take to achieve it? Throughout this recording, the pronoun he refers to he, she, animal, or creature. How important is it that he accomplishes the goal? What other characters will assist the main characters in reaching the goal? Descriptions of your characters should be very descriptive. A subplot is a secondary plot strand that is a supporting side story for any story of the main plot. Subplots may connect to the main plots in either time and place or thematic significance. Subplots often involve supporting characters. Sidebar. Each character should account for the reaction of the characters involved. Dialogue. The conversation between characters. Give your characters accents, a distinct tone, and a unique vocabulary. This way you do not have to always say she said, he said, or so and so said. You want to be sure the reader can follow who is talking. When your characters' names have the same initials, you can get mixed up when writing. Hence, try to avoid using characters with the same initials. In each chapter, create a dialogue that shows two or more people conversing when describing your characters. Use a conversation that would help the reader know what nationality, social position, occupation, family member, etc. that they are. In the book, When a Man Loves a Woman, you know Sarah is an accountant by the job she landed. The conversation was between her and the interviewer. Sarah also called her mother to tell her that she got the job. Create dialogue of arguments and characters giving their own opinion. Give an explanation to why each character said what they said. Create dialogue where the characters are going back and forth, especially before, during, and after something happens. It could even be a romance scene, an athletic scene, a golf scene, a teacher talking to a student, and so on. How do your characters say hello? Hi, hey, what's up, buenos dias, or whatever. How would your characters say yes? Maybe they'll say yeah. Or how would they say no? Null or nope? It's according to what you want your character to display. Be sure to have dialogue throughout your manuscript with your characters acting out scenes. Write what each character has to say about what is going on. Take them into places and transition them out of places. Cause them to go overboard with their characters. This keeps the story interesting. Personality traits. Your characters should have a personality that is noticeable. Some characters should have frequent mood swings, stormy relationships, poor impulse control, alcohol and drug abuse. Make sure character personalities stand out so that the reader will be able to identify there is a certain personality that is being portrayed. Second chapter. Start building your story from the first chapter of how the goal will be reached. In other words, move your story forward by reading the first chapter and starting in chapter 2 where chapter 1 left off. Third chapter. Introduce some events that take place to build your story from chapter 2. This is a great place to bring in the subplots. There should be a need for change in this chapter. How are you going to describe the need for change? Use a main character to show the need to change. Fourth chapter. How are the characters reacting to the disappointment of what occurred? How intense can you describe the conflict? Fifth chapter. The stakes of the conflict are high and intense. It is affecting the subplot. Something awful happens that causes the reader to really want to know what next. Sixth chapter. 
the heroes try new ways to solve the conflict, but the pressure is on. In this chapter, the plot moves forward. Seventh chapter. The villain comes in to manipulate the goal. The resolution to the conflict fails. New design of reaching the goal is accomplished. Additional characters are introduced to help reach the goal. Eighth chapter. Describe the quest in reaching the goal along with the additional characters. Ninth chapter. What events are taking place in moving the story forward? What is the villain doing to make matters worse? The plan fails and the hero has to come up with another way to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Tenth chapter. How does the hero react to the conflict? At this point, he feels like giving up because of the disappointment. The conflict was not resolved and something else is established. Intensify the conflict and describe how disappointed the hero character is. Angry, sad, extremely upset. What do the other characters have to say pertaining to the horrendous challenge? 11th chapter. The stakes are intensified. It doesn't seem as if the goal would be accomplished. The situation has gotten out of hand and has taken a turn for the worst. 12th chapter. How does the hero react emotionally? The hero and secondary characters decide to create short-term goals to resolve the conflict. What input does each character have to say regarding the objective? The objective as a noun means purpose, idea, intention, reason, and intent. 13th chapter. Give descriptive information of how each character in this chapter reacts during a slow period. Nothing seems to work and the hero is thinking to give up. The villain thinks he is winning. 14th chapter. Now the story picks up again with new short-term goals and how each character decides to reach them. By this time, one or two characters should become anxious in reaching a resolution. 15th chapter. There is an established quest for reaching the goal, but the villain will not let up. He fights harder to win. How does each character react to it? What really seems impossible might actually work. 16th chapter. The gloom and doom heightens and everyone seems to not know what to do. The character's conversation is sure, but on the other hand, they are not exactly sure about how to reach the goal. 17th chapter. Please contact McClure Publishing for the information in chapter 17 so that you can cross over to the conclusion of your manuscript. Our information is located online. You can Google us or call us at 800-659-4908. You may also log on to our website, which is www.mcclurepublishing.com. Email us at mcclurepublishing at msn.com. But what I'll do is give you the conclusion from chapter 18 to chapter 20. 18th chapter. A life-changing event happens which causes a pivotal essential reaction to occur. How does this change affect all subplots? What is the most important part of the change that causes the story to move toward the end? 19th chapter. Write how each character reacts to this life-changing pivotal moment. Bring every character in that will play a part at the showdown. Give a detailed description of how the showdown unfolds. 20th chapter. 
the opposition disappears and the characters act out the resolution to the plot and all the subplots. The gloom and doom is mentioned again to take the characters into describing how they feel now compared to how they felt. Something can also happen at this point to cause the opposition to reoccur. This is also where you can add the twist to the story. The twist at the end of Sixth Sense was, get the movie. This movie to me was an outstanding film. Just to show you the twist at the end. We at McClure Publishing are dedicated to serving you in the literary arts world of getting your book published and distributed. It is very vital to leave a thumbprint and legacy for your family of something you did while you were here. Many could be reading your literary writing for generations to come. Again, please contact us at your earliest convenience so that we may assist you in meeting your publishing needs. Our phone number is 1-800-659-4908 or email us at McClurePublishing at msn.com. You may also visit us on the web at McClurePublishing.com. Thanks so much for listening.